Welcome back to the dungeon and uh, today for the Fender Supersonic 22. Okay, this is the special edition. It's got the Celestian G12 vintage speaker and it's got the funky uh, Tilex. But we all know that this amp has issues with the reverb, noisy reverb. Well, this amp, noisy reverb is fixed. So I'm going to put this on YouTube and I hope that you guys who are fighting with this noisy reverb can benefit from this. And I, I, this is coming after a lot of experimentation, changing a lot of values and components and all sorts of things. And chasing up some really dark alleys, which didn't really work. What did work? Let me show you. So we're going to zoom in here. You're going to and remember, guys, very, very high voltages in here that can hurt you and kill you. So please be careful. I have the amp on because I want to demonstrate to you right now. Now there's a bit of background noise. It's coming from my neighbor's basement because I'm in a semi-detached house. And his heating system is running at the moment. It's an oil burner. So it's making a bit of background noise. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to, well, zoom in. <laughs> Physically bring the, the, my phone closer. So you can get the, an idea of the level of noise. Now... I have a guitar plugged in, but its volume is on zero. So this input is active, but basically shorted out. It's the same as removing the jack. So that low frequency hum with a little bit of hiss is all I'm getting out of this amp. Now the reverb is on zero. Well, on one, which is nothing. Okay. I'm going to put this back in and I'm going to turn up the reverb. I'll do it again. So there it's all the way minimum. There it's halfway. There it's max. So we do have a bit of that 50 cycle and some hiss but it is way, way, way quieter. And what I did was two things. Now this looks pretty ugly over here, but believe me, this ugliness has worked. I'm gonna tidy it up. But I was pretty excited to be able to share this with you because I've seen the online forums and so on. A lot of guys asking the same question about this. So let's get a look what's going on. This here is the reverb tank connector little PC board. Underneath here you get the two reverb tank connectors passing through the chassis to the uh, uh, to the reverb unit huh? well, those cinch cables that run back to the reverb unit by the way those cinch cables are a piece of crap I think we should change those out oh listen to it oh that's my phone that's just my phone see as I come closer and further it's busy thinking so let's leave it to think right let's continue right this is the amplifier tube after the reverb tank Okay, it's the one to the right of the little reverb connector board. And to the left of it is the reverb transformer coming back at the inlets and outlets. And then this is the reverb driver tube, the 1287. No problems here. No microphony, nothing. It's very quiet. This boy over here. So, post reverb tank amplifier tube. Okay. If you notice, I've taken those wires, the red, sorry, the yellow, green, and blue wires, either side. And I've moved them away from this board. Coming from the factory, they tend to lie up against this board over here. And I've tucked them in very carefully underneath this PC board so I can get as much contact between the wire and the chassis as possible. And this has made a mountain of difference in removing that noise from the reverb system now the next thing that I've done which you've probably seen this ribbon cable over here runs from the front panel where all of our controls and the preamp tubes are connected to this PC board up front here and then finally it exits over here and it exits on uh, and this is pin number one of this ribbon cable or, or, or yeah um, lead number one, whatever you want to call it, pin number one, the, the, the black one. The opposite side, the outermost connection, this last cable in this ribbon cable, 
is the audio going out to the power amp and it runs all the way back to the input of the power stage board and this is just a plain old ribbon cable and while I was goofing around here I noticed that every time I put my hand over here it suddenly would go and start humming and buzzing and doing stupid nonsense so I got myself some aluminium tape and I cut about uh, what's that about a two centimeter about a one inch strip and I laid half of the tape on the one end that covers this audio carrying signal and then wrapped it around I could lift this up but I don't want to do that because I don't want to distort this thing anymore but it's you can see it's wrapped around over here and passed on both ends to create a coaxial shield for the signal this served to reduce a lot of hum as well but what I had to do and of course this is aluminium tape so it's not easy to do I had to then connect a wire which I've done over there and this I have to tidy up I've got to solder that so that it's got a nice solid connection maybe make some kind of a brass plate that I can slip in underneath there and then tie it up with a tie wrap to hold it in position so that I have a grounding strap and I probably don't need to wrap this wire as much as I did either I was using it to experiment so this is going to be tidied up and then I'm going to ground this uh, uh, this 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 aluminium tape that I've put on over here and I've secured it to this wire loom this bundle that runs up the top here so that there's no shorting of this thing because of course this is a, a ground connection right here so that there won't be any shorting of this to the components below or above well above is not a problem because this is going to make contact if it does at all yeah it looks like it might a little bit when it goes into the housing so I'll tidy that up to to minimize the amount of contact there and potential for short circuits but right now, this is about as good as it's going to get. The other thing that I want to demonstrate is, you may have experienced this. I cranked up my reverb all the way and you can hear there is some feedback. Now, if I put my hand on the reverb tank and I am basically just dampening the case of the reverb tank, that uh, uh, feedback goes away. There it is. There it goes. So now I know I'm getting mechanical feedback into the reverb tank that is causing that feedback. So I am going to remove the reverb tank and then inspect the shock mounting of the reverb because I believe that that is the only thing that's wrong over there. I think they cheaped out on the way they mounted that reverb tank and I'm going to look at that. And then I will get back to you. Okay, folks, so there it is. I've now made my little contact wire running to ground. And the cable tie is just holding that thing in place. It's making contact in a number of spots along that. Uh, or focus over there. And making contact in a number of spots along there. So I don't expect it to be uh, lifting anytime soon. We'll see how it goes with time. But for now, my amp is really nice and silent. So no complaints about that. And the next phase will be immobilizing or stabilizing the reverb tank. So I'm going to put this amp chassis back into uh, the head back into the, uh, to the cabinet or the chassis back into the cabinet and then we'll move on to the next phase. All right, so chassis back in the cabinet. is on and now let's check out those that sound uh, or at least the level of the and there it is again it's right on the verge of feeding back but it's behaving itself in this orientation which is good news for me and I notice that I do have a bit of noise back, but it still is way, way, way less than before. So I think that we can call this one a success. So thanks for watching. I'm going to close it up and play some tunes.